If I don't proclaim the gospel, what is my reward? Praise God. We have to have an understanding that when we're worshiping God, when we are doing life here on earth with God, that there has to be a level, like Isaiah, a level of attraction and repulsion. We are attracted by the mystery of God's holiness. He is so beyond us. He has so much power, so much glory, so much love, so much. He is love. He is truth. He is power. He is knowing. He is all. And so when you come in the face of that, you want to touch that. You want to get in touch with that power. But there has to be this part of you that is also repulsed by it because you know you could not withstand, hallelujah, touching the power of God and live. You could not see the face of God in a spirit form and remain. And so we are juxtaposed. We are, we are, ah, there's a tension there in our human life. Even as Christians, we are to regard God as holy. Work out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Not work out your salvation with jokes and, 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 um, and, and, and cute remarks and uh, a little uh, tasks, one, two, three, and, and, and a number of, of things to do and a number of things not to do. No, no, no. Fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. Where is it? Where is it on the pulpit even today? Where is it with the men of God and the women of God today? Where is it in the house of God today? Our parents have no fear for their children. That they touch something holy is the pulpit while the pastor's preaching. That they run amok in the church. No fear. There's no fear. There's no reverence for the things of God. And what becomes holy? There is holy place. And there's holy things. So there's a holy atmosphere. When you were a child and you had a, a place where you went to. When you were in trouble, or when you were troubled in your little, as a child, you know, maybe you went under a tree, or maybe you went into your bedroom to a, grab a certain stuffed animal or something like that, or whatever gave, brought you comfort. You went to a place, and maybe you, you had held on to something, maybe a, a locket from your mom or from your dad that gave you strength, right? And so you went away, and, and, and you remember those things. You remember that place, because it was special. It was holy, God creates special places that are holy and special things that are holy. The house of God is holy. The pulpit is holy. The instruments used for worship are holy. They were assigned to the, to the Levitical families, right? Okay. The word of God is holy. It should not be made light of, right? So the preaching and the teaching of the word, we should be somewhat sober in regards to that. It's okay to have, to have some lightheartedness and a little joy in, in the preaching and the teaching and a little excitement. That's great. But sober minds, receiving the word of God in all holiness. Amen. We've got to be serious sometimes about what we're hearing and what we're doing. When we're up here worshiping, God could strike any of us down. Any of us. If he wanted to, if we came up here with less than reverence for him in our worship. Amen. Praise God. Strive for peace, Hebrews 12, 14 says, with everyone. And strive for holiness, which without no one will what? No one will see the Lord. No one will see the Lord without holiness. But understand that God gives you that holiness. Jesus is that holiness. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You cannot attain that holiness on your own. If you could, we wouldn't, need a, we wouldn't have needed Jesus to come and, and do his job, what he did. Amen? He did what he did so that the Holy Spirit, his spirit could dwell inside of us. So he could dwell in us in the spirit. And his holiness is transferred to us. It's accounted to us, his righteousness. And now that righteousness... Here's the hard part. Here's the one we don't want to talk about. Here's the one that people get confused. That one needs to work itself out 
in the way of personal holiness. Personal holiness. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. So you must need personal holiness. Praise God. And we were just talking about this in the kitchen. A lot of times we think personal holiness is the what. Sometimes it is. But more than often it wasn't the what that God was concerned with. It was the how. Yes, this is what it is, but it's how you treat it. It's how you use it. Or if you do use it, if I told you not to use it. <laughs> so, so that's the thing here. It's about the holy thing. And the holy space. And how it's treated by us. Who are, by the way, a holy thing. And a holy space. That's us. Our bodies. Our temples. We are the temple of the living God. And we take up holy space with this, this thing called the body. And this thing, God has sanctified after our new birth. He said, I made you holy. I put me in you. So now that you've been touched by me permanently, you are holy. Are you aware of the presence of God inside of you every day? To practice that, to know that. Because I tell you what. We have some events here in this church, and other churches have events, and we go, and we have end time, and we have this, and we have you know, revival and all that. Well, we get a touch of a special touch of Jesus, where he comes, and we see healing, and we get healed, and we see the Holy Ghost fire, and we see, we see things change, we see prophecy come to life, we see uh, uh, people transformed, right? We see, just, we feel the Holy Ghost. We get that awesome experience. Some people flip out and fall on the ground. They can't handle that kind of, of beauty and majesty of Jesus. And, and, and we get all this going. But then tomorrow comes. And that, that holy experience. And then the next day. And then the next day. And now here we are a week later. Do you feel the same way today you did when the Lord was here? No, you don't. Be honest with yourself. We distance ourselves from God every moment of every day. And that allows us, gives us the opportunity to make this place the devil's place. And the Bible tells us, give no place to the devil. Because your place is a holy place. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. All your faculties are holy ground. Your eyes, your ears, your, tent, your sense of smell, your sense of touch, your feelings, your emotions, what you think, how you think. How you think. Not just what you think. How you think. I don't care that you're thinking about that girl. I care how you're thinking about my daughter. Right? Right? I don't care... What you're thinking about your mom and dad. I care about that, that you are thinking about them. How are you thinking about them? I don't care that you're speaking about them. How are you speaking about them? Because it's not so much all the time the what. It's the what we do with the what. How. How and why. What's the motivation behind it? And what is the end result of how we either use or abuse that which God has given us that is holy? He says this tongue, <laughs> this heart... These are the worst enemies of the flesh right here. But, but it all comes through here. The lust of the eyes. Lust of the flesh. Pride of life. Amen. Holiness attracts and repels us. Why do you think you're repelled, even as a Christian, from sometimes the holiness of God? If you see a demon come in here. <laughs> see a demon come in here. I see a demon come in here. And you see the men of God... Come down upon that demon, praying with the word of God. What are you going to do? Some, some people, let me see, let me see. Oh, I want to see what's going on. Other people are like, I'm out of here. Whoop, there they go, they're gone. They ain't sticking around. Amen. What do you do when God starts moving and starts working on, on things that are supernatural? that are going to make you realize God is here 
And so is the devil, and it's all real. And what's happening here happens in your own body and in your own mind every day. Now, you may not have demons, but you're being affected by them every day. Through your eyes and your ears, through the lust of the flesh, through media and television and co-workers and all. And, and the, everywhere you turn, the devil's got something in your face. Everywhere. And you are fooling 